Hi, I'm George Self. This video is one in a series designed to help with Logisim Evolution Digital Logic Labs. This is Lab 10, Random Access Memory, RAM. The purpose of this lab is to explore how RAM devices are used in digital logic circuits. Let me demonstrate the completed circuit. The first thing you'll notice is that this circuit is so wide it hangs off the edge of the drawing canvas. So I'm going to collapse some of this on the left so that we can see the entire circuit. I'll also point out that unlike all of the other labs in this book, this particular lab I've drawn the RAM device on the main circuit instead of a sub circuit. That's because this is only used as a demonstration of how RAM is used. It's not intended to be a final device. At any rate, the RAM chip is the one here in the middle. This happens to be a 256 uh, position chip, that is there are 256 locations. They are each 8 bits wide. The other thing I'll point out about a RAM chip is that it uses a unique kind of port known as a bi-directional port. In digital logic, typically a port is either an input port or an output port, but with RAM chips, a single port can be either input or output, depending on various settings. And that's what these ports are. So let's take a look. The instructions say to click reset to set the counter to zero. So I'll click reset. You also need to clock this. And once you do that, you'll notice that the RAM chip is now prepared to either read or write from position zero. Click the read write until write to RAM LED is on. Well, here's the read write button. I click it and the write to RAM LED is on. Next, click the keyboard device and enter some text. So I'll click this keyboard device and on my computer's keyboard, I'm just typing this is text. Next, click the clock to feed that text into RAM. So here's the clock. I'll click it once and notice now that the T is missing off of this is text. But in our RAM, we've now stored the ASCII value for capital T, which is 5-4. I'll clock again. And as I clock, our keyboard text disappears and RAM begins to fill up. When we have finished that, we click reset to set the counter to zero. And again, we'll have to clock. That sets the counter to zero. Click the TTY clear button to clear that display. Now there's nothing on our teletype right now that's TTY. If though we had run this particular simulation two or three times, there may be a message on here. So I'll clear that off. Click write a read write until read from RAM is lit. So I'll click read write and now read from RAM is lit. And now click the clock to empty RAM into the teletype. So I'll clock this. And as I clock that, notice that all of those letters are coming back out of RAM onto the teletype device, the screen. Now that's how RAM works. Your lab instructions will have you build this circuit and as you add pieces, it will describe what each of those pieces do. While I've got you in this video, let me just point out that this counter is what counts from zero up to whatever the uh, maximum value is. And we always load zero into the counter by hitting reset. If I hit reset and clock that, then the counter goes back to zero and we're ready to do something else with RAM. The way RAM works, you'll notice there's a write enable port. When that's high, then we are going to write something off of the keyboard into RAM. There's an out port, out 
put enable. When that's high, then we're going to read something out of RAM into a teletype. I've used over here a, um, a, a controlled buffer so that when write is high, that's controlled by this flip-flop. And notice if I click the flip-flop, write will go high. We write to RAM. This control buffer is now enabled. So whatever's on the keyboard can come in to the uh, RAM. When I click this again, then read becomes enabled. This flip-flop makes it so that only one of these can be enabled at a time. With read enabled, this control buffer is functional. It's active. So now whenever I click on RAM, whatever's on this bus will get fed into the output. That's about it for this lab. RAM is a fairly simple device to deal with. You only have to remember to make sure you're either reading or writing and set up some method such as a flip-flop to ensure that only read or write will be enabled at any one time. Go ahead and build this circuit. If you run into any roadblocks or don't understand what parts of it are doing, please let me know and I'll be glad to help. I'll be seeing you online.